Games with graphics like these suck. So in this episode we're gonna upgrade our game to look like this. This video is sponsored by Craft Picks. Go check them out and grab yourself some free assets or if you wanna buy a paid asset make sure to use my link to get a discount. The first order of business is going to the link that you see in the description, downloading the assets and extracting them somewhere. I'm gonna do it directly to my desktop. Once you have all the assets, go back into your Unity project, create a new folder for the sprites and drag them all in here. Great, now let's open the player folder and take a look at the import settings. Let's select all the sprites that we have in here and change the filter mode to point, then press apply. Now, let me show you exactly why we did this. Let's find the player in the hierarchy and then select the circle object. And finally we can replace the circle sprite with the one from the pack called Hero Pistol. Next up we can delete the square object because we don't need it anymore. Then let's select the main camera and set the size to 1.5. Alright, now we can see the player better. Let's see what happens if we don't use the point filter. So let's select the Hero Pistol sprite again and let's try to change the filter mode to bilinear or trilinear. Generally, when working with pixel art, always use no filter, otherwise your sprites will look very blurry, like in this case. So if you change the filter to something else, switch it back to point and let's continue. First we're gonna rename the circle game object to torso, then we're gonna create another child object of the player and this one is gonna be called legs. First of all, on the legs we'll need a sprite renderer and you can immediately drag the first frame of the walk animation in here. Next, let's slap an animator on the legs as well and we're gonna leave it for now and come back later to complete the walk animation. Next up, let's select the player object, open the player rotation script and let's make the torso and legs rotate separately. In here, let's create two new transforms, one for the torso and one for the legs. Then let's also mark both of them with serialize field. Once you have that, let's go back into the editor and assign them. Once you do that, let's get back into the code and let's change the look at method that we have inside the rotator class. Right now, this method is rotating the player transform itself, but we want it to do something different. We want to rotate just the torso itself. So for this purpose, let's modify the method to receive a transform parameter. I'm gonna call mine rotated transform. And then on line 13, we're gonna replace the default transform with this one. Cool, now we can go into the player rotation script and just pass in the torso into the look at method. Let's press play and see if it works. As you can see it does, but now the player is looking in the opposite direction of the mouse. Why? Well, our player torso sprite is looking down by default. We need the exact opposite. Fortunately, we can easily tweak the code to fix that. So let's go back into the rotator script again and instead of plus 90 degrees we're gonna change it to minus 90 degrees. And this is going to make our sprites to look in the opposite direction. Let's see. As you can see, now it's working as intended. But we do have a small issue with the movement speed. My player is moving way too quickly. So I'm gonna reduce the movement speed value to 30 or maybe 40. See what fits you better. Great job. We're done with the torso rotation. Now let's move on to the legs. But before we do that, make sure to check out my Patreon and YouTube memberships. You can get a lot of cool stuff here, like early access to the videos, source code of all the projects, and exclusive access to my future games and courses. And also other stuff, so make sure to check it out, because that would help me out a lot as well. Alright, let's continue now. Let's open the player rotation script again, and in here we're gonna create an update method. And our current task will be to rotate the legs to face the movement direction. For this purpose we're gonna use the look at method again, but this time we're gonna pass in the legs transform. And just for now let's make it look at vector 3.0. Right, now to continue we need to get access to the current input from the mover class, so let's open that. As you can see the current input right now is a protected variable and we could make it public, but just because I don't like this approach let's create a new field called current input with a capital C, which is just gonna return the current input. This way we maintain good practices and we also make sure that the current input can be changed from outside scripts. Okay, now we can return to the player rotation script and just to keep everything tidy let's create a header for the torso and legs transform and another one for the mover reference. 
then just create a private mover variable called player mover and make it a serialized field so we can assign it in the editor. Good. Now we go inside the update method and we create a local vector free variable called legs look point. And it's going to be equal to the transforms position plus a new vector free in which we're gonna put the current input on the x and the y. Awesome, we're almost done. Now let's go back into Unity and drag the player movement script into the player mover field. Then you can just press play and see the result. As you can see it's working, the legs are looking in the direction of the player's input, but it does look weird at this moment. And that's primarily because the legs don't have an animation. So let's implement that next. First of all, let's go into the assets folder and create a new folder for the animations. Once you have it, right click inside it, then press create, then let's choose an animator controller. I'm gonna call mine legs animator, but that doesn't matter and it's entirely up to you. Now let's select the legs object and just drag it into the controller field of the animator. Okay, that was the first element that we needed. The second one is a script. So let's go into the scripts folder and create a new C sharp script. I'm gonna call mine legs animation, but again, doesn't really matter, so it's up to you. Then let's select the legs object and just attach the script to it. The next step is gonna be a bit tricky, so bear with me and rewind the video in case you need to. With the legs object selected, let's open the animation window. First, let's create an idle animation. So let's press create, choose the animation folder and then pick the name for your animation. Next, we need to change the sprites. So let's press the red button, but also I'm gonna drag the project window a bit up so I can see the animation window the inspector window and the project files at the same time. And now I can just take the third sprite and drag it into the sprite field. And that's it for the idle animation. And now that we have the idle one, we can move on to the walking animation. So let's create a new clip, pick a name and let's start assigning the sprites. The order might seem a bit random to you, but this is what I think looks best. So just follow along and you can change it later if you want to. We're gonna start off with the third sprite, same as the idle animation. The second frame is going to be at 5 milliseconds and is going to be the second sprite and then the next one is going to be the first. Next we're going to use the second one, then the third, then the sixth. Then we're going to have number 5, number 4, number 5 again, then number 6 and finally number 7. And this is what the result looks like. Alright, if you're happy with the results, let's go into the legs animation sprite and write the code that's gonna make this work inside the game. First of all, I'm gonna delete everything that we don't need, and then I'm gonna use the require component attribute to make sure that this object is gonna have an animator. Next, I'm going to create a private animator called legs animator, and an awake method where I'm going to use get component in order to get access to the animator component on the object. Following this, we're gonna need an update method and also a reference to the player mover, which we're gonna make a serialized field in order to assign it in the editor. If you have the same issue as me here, where Visual Studio doesn't recognize this class, make sure to include using topdown.movement at the top of your script. Then inside the update method, we're gonna grab the legs animator and we're gonna set a boolean to true or false, depending on whether the player mover has current input or not. And that's all the code that we need. Let's get back into Unity and work on the animation transitions. Make sure to have the legs object selected, open the animator tab and let's create a boolean parameter. And make sure to call it exactly like you did in the code. For me, it was called moving with all underscore letters. Great. Next up, we need to create two transitions, one from idle to walk and one from walk to idle. Once you have them, you can select them open the settings, set the exit time and transition duration to zero, disable the exit time and set the proper condition. As you probably figured out, we're gonna transition from idle to walk when our boolean is true and vice versa. The final step here is to select the legs object and assign the player mover reference. Then you can just press play and see how your animation works. I think this looks a lot better. Now let's finally get rid of this grey background and put some actual environments in the game. First let's go to Window, 2D and open the Tile Palette window. Then just dock it in the Inspector, whatever it feels comfortable to you. 
Before we do anything, we need to create a new palette. I'm gonna call mine ground palette, then just press create. It's going to ask you where do you want to save this palette and for this purpose let's create a new folder which I'm just gonna call tiles. And if you navigate to that folder in the editor you're gonna see your palette which is empty for now. Another thing that we'll need for this to work is a rectangular tile map so let's go into the hierarchy and create a new one. I'm going to rename mine and call it ground. As you can see when we create a tile map it also creates a grid by default. For now let's just leave it like it is but we're gonna come back to this later. Now let's put some actual sprites in our tile palette. So let's open the tile palette window, go to the sprites folder, then let's open the environment folder, then TDS modern tile sets, then tile set v2 and finally the tiles folder. First let's work on the grass tiles. So open the grass folder, select all the sprites and just drag them into the tile map. This is going to create a bunch of tiles and it's going to ask you where do you want to save them again. So let's navigate to the tiles folder that we created and press select folder. We have our first tiles. Now let's do the same thing with all the other folders. Just make sure to leave enough space between the tiles when you drag in the sprites. And our ground palette is done. Now let's put it in action, select the brush button and paint a grass tile. You're gonna notice a couple problems. First of all, I think the cell size is a bit too big for the player. So let's select the grid object and change the cell size to 0.5 on the X and Y. The second problem is the fact that the sprites look blurry and they're a bit too big for the grid. To solve this, we need to change the filter mode to point and change the pixel per unit of each sprite. So let's go into each folder, select all the sprites, change the filter to point and change the pixel per unit to 128. When you're done, don't forget to press apply. And our sprites look crispy and they're the exact size that we need. Next we need to do the exact same thing for all the other tiles. And just so we have a visual representation, I'm gonna paint one of each tile to our tile map. Now let's go into each individual folder, select all the sprites and change the import settings. And when you want to remove a tile, just press on the eraser brush and then press on the tile that you want to remove inside the scene view. Now let's paint an area with grass tiles. And to do it quicker, you can just press this button and drag your mouse across the screen. This will be much quicker than painting tiles manually, especially for large areas. All right, now we have a ground palette. Now let's create a new one for the props to make the area more visually diverse. I'm gonna call it props palette and when it asks us to choose a folder, let's go into the tiles folder that we created earlier and create a new one specifically for the props. Now let's place some sprites in it, but for this one we're gonna have to do things a bit differently. Let's navigate back to the TDS modern tile sets folder and open the tiles folder inside it. In here I wanna use these two sprites, but obviously they're larger than the ones that we used before. So let's change their import settings. First let's change the filter to point and the pixels per unit to 128 like we did before. But unlike previously here we're gonna change the sprite mode to multiple. Now let's select the first sprite that we'll use and press the sprite editor button. Then once you see this window press slice in the top left corner. Next change the type to grid by cell and set the pixel size to 64 by 64. When you're done press slice and then apply. Great job! Now if you go back into the editor, you're gonna see that this sprite is split into 25 smaller sprites. Now let's do exactly the same thing for the second prop we've chosen. Awesome! Now let's open the tile palette window again, and before we start dragging in the sprites, let's create another rectangular tile map for the props. And now if you go back into the tile palette, you're gonna see that we have an option to select to which tile map our tiles will be painted onto. So let's select props and drag in the first sprite. When it's going to ask you for the tile location, go into the tiles folder and select the one for the props that we just created. Now let's do exactly the same thing for the second sprite. Put 
When you have both of them go into the tile palette, press on the brush button, select the entire first sprite and place it inside the scene view. If you only see the outline for now, don't worry, this is because of the sprite order. Let's open the inspector window and fix that. Select the props object or any other object that has a renderer component and underneath the sorting layer press add new sorting layer. Once you're here create a new layer, call it props and place it between ground and obstacles. Now select the props object again and change its sorting layer. And just because I like symmetry I'm gonna place the player object right in the middle of this prop. Alright now just to see if everything works we can select the second sprite, place it a bit to the north, then change the palette back to the ground one and the layer to ground as well and create a concrete path from one prop to another. Just to avoid an empty screen and keep everything looking decent, I'm gonna paint a couple grass tiles up here as well. Finally, let's add some obstacles. Underneath the grid object, let's create another rectangular tile map and we're gonna call this one obstacles. Right away, let's change the sorting layer to obstacles so we don't have to come back to this later and then press add component and select a tile map collider 2D. This component will make sure that Unity will automatically add colliders to all the tiles inside this tile map. Now let's quickly go back into the tile palette window and create a new palette which will be called obstacles palette. Inside the tiles folder that we have previously, let's create a new one specifically for the obstacles. Now let's pick a couple of sprites. Let's navigate to the TDS modern tile set environment again and open the rocks folder. Select all the sprites and do the usual thing, change the pixel per unit to 128 and change the filter mode to point. Keep the sprite mode to single though. And now you can just drag the sprites inside the tile palette window as we did previously. Cool, now you can press the brush button and place one of the rocks. Just don't forget to change the layer to obstacles first. The scene is still looking a bit bland and boring, so let's add a couple other obstacles as well. Let's go into the trees and bushes folder. Select all the sprites, change the pixel per unit and the filter mode again and drag them all inside the tile palette. And now it's basically up to you to create the scene that you want. Place a couple tree stumps, place a couple trees, bushes, etc. Just make it look nice. And when you're done select the obstacles object and you're gonna see that all the obstacles have a collider around them. But we still haven't implemented the collision for the player, so that will be our last task for this video. So let's select the player object, press add component and search for circle collider 2D. Obviously this is too big right now, so let's set the radius to 0.1. Then I'm going to move this component up so that it's next to the rigid body, just to maintain the structure. And now we can just press play and see if everything is working properly. The collisions are working, but the player is also rotating when hitting the obstacles, which is not good. So let's go back into the editor, select the player object, expand the rigid body to the component, Set the angular drag to 0 and let's also enable freeze rotation. If you remember, in the last video we made the torso and the legs rotate separately. So if our player object isn't rotating, that's completely fine. As you can see, everything's working properly. So thanks to everyone for watching and to cap things off, I want to give a huge shout out to all the Patreons and YouTube members. George Mulcahy, Umut, Qmash and PD100 Academy of Art.